Okay. Okay, I started the recording. So again, you are like 10 or 11 years with the observer, right? So you are the guru, no doubt, by far. <laughs> you have more experience than any one of us, right? I love, you know, I've always loved um, technology to showcase, you know, and track progress for people, even if it was just a cell phone photo or, you know, um, I'm that old that we used like normal cameras, you know, way back then. <laughs> I know I'm 90 years old. I look gray, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's a wonderful uh, tool and I did have the privilege to play with the prototype about 10, 11 years ago now and it honestly has been a really wonderful journey to actually see the growth of the observe and the improvement of the technology um, so it's wonderful to see that even though skin fluorescence is a very old technology it was untouched for like a hundred years until Walter Arkenstein um, you know, made the observe, and now we get to use this old technology in a very modern and exciting way to communicate with our clients at a much higher level. So I love it, but I've been, gosh, 20, 21, 22 years ago, I remember still using like the old skin scanner that you had to shove your clients in with those blue light bulbs and sweating profusely underneath it. Um, so yes, I've been using skin fluorescence technology even way back then. So yes, it's very oh, yeah. nice to have modern technology to do this with and capture it on iPads that we can share it, right? All right, so, so let's mm -hmm. jump into the second day session and hopefully not the last okay. one that we have with you. And by yes. the way, talking about Walter and the guys from uh, the Netherlands, I, we are working for so long time and I, we haven't met each other. And hopefully this upcoming June at Incas will have the pleasure to see each other and to shake hands. So I'm very, very excited about it. Oh, very and good. They are a lovely the, team. So yes. The stage is yours. Uh, go mm. ahead. We're looking forward to hearing you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually in the process of doing a documentation of a case study for a presentation that I'm giving um, at a conference. Those of you that know me know that I follow the principles of cornea therapy. I'm on the Board of Education for the International Association of Applied Cornea Therapy. And I have the privilege of being an invited guest speaker for our conference. It's an online virtual conference at the end of May. So I am covering a topic that is talking about sustainable skincare. In other words, how do we sustain results that we've accomplished from, um, you know, uh, working with our clients over a period of time? And I'm showcasing in this talk, um, you know, clients who've been with me for over 10 years to show how they've been able to maintain the results that we've accomplished from their skin. I used to, I used to think that he was so together. And oh. he has like such good insight on things. And I'm like, yeah, he's got, yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm. Fresh Prince has really evolved and blah, blah, blah. And now okay. I'm like, um, uh, Moshe, can, can we that? mute everyone? Yes, yes. Somebody, yeah. somebody. And then I didn't watch any of the Oscars, but I watched that yeah. after. Just, but just, uh, Ellen, just a minute. That's just a minute. how. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's okay. That. That's okay. I think that yeah, and then he goes must. and wins the award and then preaches oh. about how much he's all about just love. Just a minute, just a minute. Okay, guys. Uh, somebody didn't uh, shut uh, shut off the microphone okay all right go ahead Perfect. So, that's okay so that's okay uh okay so so i'm presenting this and then one of the things that i'm doing is doing a, a little segment about skin healing so i have done a treatment on my skin that doesn't really follow the principles of cornea therapy but i wanted to track basically how fast healing occurs in a skin like mine that is very um, cornea therapy conditioned, which is why I've sworn some of my clients who's on here to secrecy. <laughs> so I have a wonderful case study because I've now in day five post-treatment and I want to share with you like what you can do in tracking the results and how that is so wonderful in tracking your client's journey, but also be able to show them before and after. And um, I also want to talk about like, generational like you know like genetic comparisons a little bit so i put my two boys through the machine um uh, on on thursday 
um, to kind of just highlight a few things that you can see genetically in people's skin early on. Um, and I have to tell you, one day I will, um, Moshe, you got to rem remind me because I, um, when my youngest, who's now five, was 10 weeks old, I put, I took an observe photo of him back then. So, no, no way. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so it's difficult with babies, obviously, because they can't have their head on. So I was like holding the machine over him, like on a pillow covered in a black sheet and in dark light room and all of that. So, but yes, I will share that photo with you guys at some point in time. So we already discussed, and I really want to invite you guys that if you have questions, please feel free to just pop it in the chat box or unmute and just ask. I like like casual training. The only silly question is the one that you don't ask. So feel free to unmute and ask or put your questions in the chat box. I'll try to be good and keep an eye on the chat box. Um, so first thing we want to cover is the different light modes. And so we have the daylight mode, we have the cross polarized mode, the parallel polarized mode. Then we have our true UV and our woods light. And for those who have now the new uh, 360 light mode as well, which is super, super fun. So um, the, the daylight mode, I explained to my clients, there's nothing surprising to it. It is literally what you see in the morning every day and every night. The cross polarized mode, I'll just touch base on just touching the, the things. We spent a lot of time on this in the last session. But the cross polarized mode is like dipping the skin under water. So it removes the glare of the surface of, of the skin or the abilities of the cornea sites to reflect light so that we can see undistorted what's going on basically beneath the skin. And it highlights vascular issues to us a little bit more clearly. The parallel polarized mode does the opposite. It enhances the reflection of the corneocytes and it showcases and highlights open pores, fine lines, wrinkles. So it's also a great mode to talk about um, showing scarring to clients who have like acne scarring and so forth. And also acne clients like their congestion in their skin. So you can actually point it out to them really clearly when you're using that light mode. Then we have our true UV light, which is like the modern blue light UV light. And that's the point uh, of, uh, yes. Jump in. There is some noise from the wire that is connected to your, the microphone there. Okay. Oh, here, uh, let me when, do this. Whenever you touch, whenever you touch the, the wire, it, it makes a noise. So, Thanks for letting me know. Is that better? Yes, this is much better. Thank Perfect. you. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, so then we have the, the true UV, which is the modern. This is where um, Walter Arkenstein has brought this to the, to the, you know, to the new century, the, the, the skin fluorescence technology. So we've kind of ha have this ability to stabilize the, tr the UV light so that we don't have that overwhelming blue hue in the images and we can really see more clearly the chromophores being fluoresced under the true UV light. So it shows us um, things like um, pigmentation, loss of structural integrity, but it does also show sebaceous or epidermal secretions. Um, and additional to that, we've kept the wood slide in it because the wood slide you'll see, it does bring that old traditional feel of the blue light to the technology. But the wood slide, that blue hue makes the, um, the secretions, the epidermal secretions fluoresce more. So I find that more useful when I'm talking about and looking at the secretions of the skin. But both the true UV and the wood slide is going to tell us similar pieces of information. The one is just stronger at showing um, pigmentation um, and color distortion, where the other one is better at like showcasing that epidermal secretions. So, and then our 360 light. Daron, I'm wondering if you want to just bring that up now um, with screen share, and then I'll share my screen after you because I kind of yes. want to show this. Of course, I have it ready here. Just allow me to share my screen mm -hmm. with my iPad, just a moment. So while you bring that up, I'll just share a little bit um, that in the, uh, 
in the old clinical days before we had this technology I used to have like almost like a torch so if you imagine my sharpie being my torch that I used to hold over my client's skin so I can see how the light fluoresces off it and this is what we do with makeup we kind of manipulate with makeup the way that lights reflect off the skin so that the bride's skin is flawless on her special day, for example. So um, the way that this image is showing up on the screen right now is with that um, ray shower, which is a patented technology with the observe, and all the lights are showing evenly on the skin. It's actually a very special technology because it's easier to uh, illuminate the skin if you could literally take the skin off and lay it flat and then just put a light on it to have even, you know, uh, illumination of the skin. But the team at uh, InnoFaith had to come up with a way that they kind of can like capture and illuminate the skin evenly that is not a flat surface. So that's why you see those reflector um, pads in the observe itself and it evenly in, uh, illuminates the skin by crossing the, the light, um, we call it the ray shower, um, within the machine to get that even lighting of the skin. So where it is now, where you see the little blue circle in the white and grayish circle, it's like smack bang in the middle. Perfect. So now we're going to move it around. And I just want you to go like right around the parameter. So we can see um, how this illuminates different areas. So yes, this is like the picture that we used to, you know, well, I use when I tell ghost stories to sh scare my children when I hold the torch from the bottom up and tell ghost stories. And then if we pause it on the top, yes, perfect, perfect. We can see here that you, we have that shadow falling on the skin, but I love the ability to actually look from the top down because it really highlights for us where you have that loss of structural integrity. So in this client on the screen, we can see the loss of structural integrity being lost underneath the eyes, but you can see clearly how that shadowing is falling in the nasal labial folds. And we can also see it like on the chin that there's a loss of structural integrity there. Now, if we can move it to the side a little bit, Duran, perfect. You can see a shadow casting, um, you know, on both sides. So we, you can, it just helps you clearly see where that loss of volume is. And now you can see on the side that has the shadow, there's like a little extra line. So we can have a closer look to see where the client might need help in volumizing. Perfect, thank you. Very good operator, um, but also <laughs> texture. So if you just leave it exactly where it is, Daron, can you guys see where there is skin layers written on the top? And I want you to look at her skin right at that juncture. So obviously we can see the loss of structural integrity. We call it aging because we can now clearly see the wrinkle that's going right across her forehead. But I want you to look even closer for me and see that little cross linking underneath those lines of almost her entire forehead. And you can see the crystallization of the light on the forehead. It almost looks like teeny tiny little squares and you can see the light just bouncing back off that. So I can see that this person is probably on the drier side and just move the image over a little bit more to the light side for me. Perfect. Yes. Pause. Okay. So can you guys see that? We can see how it looks like, it almost looks like glitter, like little sparkles. And so we can see how the corneocytes really are reflecting the light back off. It makes it look a little bit sparkly, a little bit bubbly. So when I'm looking at a skin like this, when I'm really seeing that little sparkles, I know that I want to improve the cell turnover of the skin a little bit more so that... Um, the dryness is not so obvious and that we have the healthy cells coming up. So I can see that she has a, a, a turnover of her skin cells, but I see a slowing of the cells actually dissolving that uh, protein, the demi-hemazone protein that anchors the cornified cell to the lower layers of the skin and shedding it. That dissolving of that little anchor protein is not quite happening as fast as I would love it to happen in the skin. 
if we go back and you zoom back out. Thank you. Okay, let's go around and bring it like we're pointing. Yes, the light from here. That's awesome. So really good. So it's kind of like a little bit of a future cast as well that I can see and um, that as the volume in this client is going to diminish that we want to be working on the eye area for um, structural integrity, meaning anti-aging. We want to be bringing in the things that is going to support the collagen um, um, uh, synthesis of the skin. But also if you have anything like laser technology, uh, not laser technology and um, injectable treatments in the clinic, this is a great mode to showcase to people how the areas that you can volumize with the use of something like um, fillers um, as an example. Um, it also showcases on the forehead. Can you guys see now when the shadow is falling, it's just another level of assessing um, wrinkles. So if I were an injectable clinic, this is a light mode that I would be hammering on as well to kind of showcasing where those problem areas are if the client is considering those type of treatments. Now, for me, I think Botox and fillers are extremely personal choices for people, um, but it's really great to have that deeper conversation with the clients if, if that is what they're interested in. So um, just opens the 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 you know the floor for conversation you can also see that the um, that the light showcases the open pores and so forth so i i really like this now Daron moshe do you have anything to add about the 360 mode i think you covered it well. yeah you nailed it um i'll just i'll just add a quick comment that when you add the 360 light mode uh the process of picture capturing becomes a few seconds longer because what we do or what happens is that you mentioned the reflectors, Rene, and the way that we capture the 360 light mode is by activating each reflector separately in a consequence, in a, uh, consecutively. Mm -hmm. So it takes like uh, three extra seconds to capture uh, the face with the 360 light mode. Yeah. Uh, so altogether, it takes about eight seconds to capture the, you know, the full, um, uh, the, all the mm -hmm. pictures all together. Uh, yeah. You can, after you, if you install the 360 light mode, you have the opportunity to enable or disable it for each individual um, angle that you're taking. So you, take, you can activate it only when you take front pictures. Mm -hmm. And then when you move to the side pictures, you can uh, dis uh, in disable it and um, it will be, it will be quicker. Perfect. Yeah, so that's good. And I would like to reserve that. Remember, your space is limited to, um, you know, to how much storage you have at the end of the day. So I would, you know, add this when I want it for the client. I personally would not necessarily capture this with every person. So it's like if I'm tracking progress or if I'm having specific conversations about extra details. So it's pretty much like if this is my torch like you're going around like this. <laughs> so, that, you know, so you have to capture a image at each one of those intervals to make this 360 light happen. Mm -hmm. So love, love, love it. It's a great conversation tool. Okay, so then I'm going to get you to unshare, Daron, so I can take over the screen because, you know, I like taking over stuff. <laughs> okay. Now, did you guys have any questions about this at this juncture? Oh, that's good. I like, we're obviously on to it. Um, okay. I'm going to see if it's going to let me do airplay. Let's just see. <laughs> You don't need the video, so. Yeah, I don't want to be on the video, but I want to be on the video. Yes, you don't need the whole gallery either. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for my iPad to connect. <clears throat> Any second now. Oh my goodness. I do believe last time I had to like manually connect it as well. There we go. Share. Yeah. 
Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, so this is my session. And um, basically what I've done is do a, a more aggressive treatment as I was sharing with you that I want to track a, a, a a healing process um, for my own skin. So first, let's look at where I was. Um, and we're going to be looking at the, um, uh, the daylight mode. Now, I'm being very vulnerable here. So bear with me. <laughs> I was using my own face for training. Oh, hate doing that. But anyway, um, all in the name of science. So the first thing um, we'll note is that this is like a um, September last year and this is kind of when I when I got the machine to begin with so I unfortunately did not take side photos because I was just having a play familiarizing myself with the machine and I have extremely light um, makeup on here which is already at the end of the day so it kind of was gone already but daylight mode nothing surprising you can see what you see in normal light mode now i want to um, highlight a few issues of my own skin and we are all our own worst enemies so i do want to say to you guys when i am talking to clients about what i'm detecting clinically in their skin i sandwich it and i always end on a positive comment about their skin i have made people cry in these sessions when i do skin analysis for them so you know, just to kind of help them back to feeling good about themselves, positive, the down and dirty information, and then finish with a positive statement. We don't want clients like feeling bad about themselves because our job is the opposite to kind of, you know, improve their self confidence and self image. So, on my skin, you can definitely see a lovely scar here, <coughs> which is a very old childhood scar. Um, in South Africa, we have um, bricks as our windowsills. And I jumped on the bed and fell off and had three stitches um, for this. And it's still there even many, many years later. You can see that I have an underlying inflammation of my skin. You can see the reddening of the skin. Um, I have a diffuse redness skin type. So redness is always popping up for me. I have this really annoying troublesome sebaceous keratosis sitting right on the brow here on the um, under my brow driving me crazy and I spent my half of my life in South Africa and New Zealand so even without going to the other light modes I can see this nice bank of pigmentation just sitting here can you guys see that okay hello 40 lovely wrinkles striating and I know that I'm at the next level of aging because if you're looking really carefully it's starting above my lash or on my lid it's straight dropping through my lash and then it's three A's out so when you're at a lower level of aging they will go down horizontally and the older we get they drop and come out more vertically so you can track this if you have clients who are in your care over the years, you certainly can. I definitely have hair growth issues. This is a polycystic ovary syndrome. So this is a really great tool as well. You're going to see the hair growth in clients' faces change and as they go into menopause as well. So don't discount the fact that you can see hair on skin as well, because it gives you a lot of information to work with as well, just by the way. <clears throat> so my eye is very trained for facial hair because I'm an electrolyst, electrologist by um, training as well. So I just kind of use it as an analytical tool as well. Because when your client is having something like polycystic ovaries, endometriosis, um, menopause, you have to take that into consideration to kind of think about how realistic the results are that you can accomplish as well you know, or how long it's going to take or how big or strong and um, technology you might need. Um, I have another scar sitting on my cheek here. I have a pigmentation spot here that's been following me around forever. On my chin, this is what we call a hot chin, okay? Very vascular, it's very inflamed, and I'm going to show you in the other light modes as well. 
and then a little the beginning of an enlarged pore which very rapidly got worse and worse to like a perfect hole there um that we just that i had excised so you can see my stitches here i have a nice fresh stitch that i'll show you in the photos follow up as true um you know sun damage sitting here you can see those little um sun damage sitting on the side of the cheek here so just sitting on top of the cheek luckily on this eye um not another frame there but i also have you know a little bit of um sun damage vascular damage loss of structural integrity and hello here's my corneocyte compaction again skin is being very sluggish typically with change of season as well september is going starting to, uh, to change into the fall um, my skin definitely doesn't like seasonal change and it also get, always gets a bit sluggish and I kind of feel like, you know, that I have a layer of skin that needs to come off basically. Okay, <clears throat> so I just wanted to highlight that. So let me quickly take you through the other light modes. This is the parallel polarized mode um, that, and remember, it enhances the reflection. So you can see the finer little lines, this one here, I'll enlarge it is more of a wrinkle and you can see it due to the depth and these finer striae's you could describe it as dehydration if you will i use the word oxidative stress which will lead to lipid peroxidation which will lead to mitochondrial dna damage so um, at this point the damage is more sitting outside of the cell and when it really starts to crease it's like the damage is getting internal to the cell with that chronological aging and for some people, it happens faster than others, right? Okay, so this is a great mode to highlight that um, uh, corneocyte compaction or congestion, um, but also uh, fine lines and wrinkles, because if I zoom in, hello, you can see that even more clearly, this is like the wrinkle starting, but you can see it looks very different. The depth of damage is very different with these little dehydration striates um, on the bottom. And then I love this light mode. Can you see the change in, um, in this uh, sebaceous keratosis here? So I had it, um, uh, a dermatologist did take a cryotherapy to it and it did kind of crustate and fall off. But now I'm like, okay, the depth of this is a little bit deeper than we anticipated. So it took a little bit longer to get it um, organized. But I also see that I have very old pigment stuck within my scar. Um, you can see like a little bit of freckling, those childhood freckles popping up. And you can see those pigmentated lesions that I was showing you earlier sitting like on the cheeks there. Hello hair, fancy, fancy. Thank you, polycystic ovaries. And you can see on the corner of my mouth, um, the little bit of pigmentation sitting there. Now that can be from people using things like um, uh, toothpaste that, um, and there was a point in time where I was using toothpaste, not thinking about it. This is going back about eight, eight to 10 years now that had the, um, uh, the bleaching stuff in because I wanted really white teeth, you know, vanity took, <laughs> took over. Um, but if you, if your clients have any of that sitting in the corners of their mouths and then expose that to sun, it can be havoc, especially for a skin that is prone to pigmentation. Okay. So this is all the little pieces of the puzzle that we put together to kind of, you know, paint the picture of why things are going wrong and establishing that underlying cause for clients. Okay, vascularity, I'm going to go back to this one and then show you this one. Remember that wherever there's pigmentation, you're going to see more vascularity or inflammation in that same area. And that is because the development of pigmentation is highly, requires a lot of energy. So we typically have like vascularity sitting right underneath the pigmentation. So when you're doing treatments, chasing pigment for clients, don't be um, upset or surprised when you then see them complaining about the vascularity once the pigment is fixed, especially on the chest. UV mode. Oh, don't you just love this? So you can see that I wear sunglasses a lot. I have sensitive eyes. I'm such a squinter. I'm 
always wearing sunglasses so you can really see that you know this area between my my brows typically don't get a lot of sun because i have sunglasses on most of the time but you can almost see where the sunglasses stop because i have this bank it's like right where the sunglasses are i do have old um hormonal mediated pigmentation as well so you can see the reminiscence of that butterfly pattern that just wants to come back all the time now in this picture i do have some blush on as well so it's actually worse i am maintaining that issue very very well for myself thank you very much you can see little things wanting to pop up there's that pigmentation mark there's that one sitting there you can see the pigment on the side um in the light note, the pigment is not as obvious in the scar. In the end, it's just at the bottom of my scar there. So that's pretty good. And the little, we call them the devil horns for um, uh, hormonal mediated pigmentation or melasma, cloasma, whatever you like to describe it as. So you can see this underlying little darker areas. Um, if you look real carefully, you can also see it sitting around here. And there's like a little matching side that is a little bit more pigmentated on the other side, almost like a, you know, like a V like this. Um, so I can see my problem areas. I had a Cindy Crawford um, mole when I was young that I had removed here. And you can see the, the pigmentation stuck within the scar tissue. And you can even see the loss of structural integrity, which is kind of due to the vascular damage. Um, when you see vascular damage, you can all often see that little purple hue around that same area, same underneath here, because collagen holds up the capillary network. So as the collagen declines, often the vascularity becomes more obvious. So this is why we see especially Celtic type skins, present more red as the individual age okay wood slide i moved i was taking the photos myself so <laughs> you know bear with me but there's no lipids on my skin there is not a dot of fluorescence on my skin so i am as dry as the desert floor knowing that it's always been that way it's something i always have to combat on my skin but you can definitely see that I'm really dry, dry, dry as a bone. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you where I'm at and I highlighted all my issues for you. So it's really surprising because when I look at the side of my face, I definitely have pigmentation on the outer halo, which is totally where the sun damage sits um, as well. And I wanted to point out, where did I see it? You can't see it. I didn't take a side profile, but you can see a little pigmented spot right here as well. So Ooh. let me show you the next um, image. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey, just a minute, uh, Rene. Rene, I think I. Uh... I mute you by by mistake. Just a minute. Can you unmute? Oh. Yes. Yes. Can okay. you hear me? Sorry. 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 That's okay. There was a note there, and I wanted to un uh, to mute somebody else. So sorry about that. No problems. Do you guys have any questions before I dig into this next little thing? No. Okay, feel free to unmute or put in the chat box. I actually can't see the chat box at the moment. So somebody just tell me if there's a question in the chat box. Okay, this is my picture that I took for your benefit just before I hopped onto the call here. So this is today and this is back in June. And then I'm gonna backtrack you to a few days ago, which was one day post my treatment, which I would never typically done do on my own skin but i couldn't subject any of my other clients to it so i decided to be my own guinea pig so um yes fun and games aren't we crazy um five days post treatment and i had a non-ablative laser treatment referred to as a micro peel so daylight mode obviously we went to chase this little sebaceous keratosis, driving me crazy. And um, we zapped the scar. 
and we did go in and target this pigmentation. Now, if your eye is not trained, it's really difficult to see this little pigmentation bank above my brows. But the more you learn to see with your observe eyes, the more easier you can see things that is not extremely obvious to the naked eye. Um, we also went and did a really aggressively or quite aggressively chased the pigment um, that was sitting underneath the eye. And I did have a, the reason was not so much the pigmentation because I could still accept the pigmentation, but it was starting to keratinize. So we, it was starting to turn into some sebaceous keratosis. So we wanted to see what the effect is and it's a controlled study. So um, we did, yes, I bruised. So what you're looking at here is actually a bruise which is quite fun because now I can track the bruising, uh, the healing of the bruise as well, if you're crazy like me. So I was like, oh, yay. Um, <laughs> sad, but true. And it was really cool because I actually got a bruise right here as well, which was not the laser treatment, but this was from Botox. Yes, I know. We kind of went for all at the same time. There is the Cindy Crawford scar that I used to, I call it the Cindy Crawford mole. So we really hammered that. And also this pigmentation spot that is just sitting there, but you can see it's deep. It's gonna require more treatments if I choose to chase it and see how these little things pop up. So see, it wasn't very obvious and I actually paid zero attention to this one, but when we did the treatment, oh, you could see quite beautifully how they pop up. And of course, <laughs> glorious little like this really um responded 10 times more than i anticipated it to okay so where was the other thing i wanted to show you oh now i can also track the surgical scar so this is the open pore and as i said it got worse i don't have a picture of that um on the observe here but it got really much larger so we did a, a puncture excision um, with one stitch so I get to remove my stitch in another few days which is quite fun and here you can see that little pigmentated area which I also didn't pay much attention to it just really really responded to the treatment um, okay so what you're looking at here and here you can see the pigmentation on the uh, on the cheekbone and that also came up quite nice. And I actually see, I don't know if I can see it in this image here, but um, yes, right in here, we had a nice sebaceous keratosis that just responded quite well too. So look at those brows, they need some attention. Anyway, so this is five days post-treatment and my skin recovery, I think is really, really great. But let's have a quick look to see what happens underneath the skin when our skin is healing. And I love tracking my clients' um, progress for any treatment like dermal needling or collagen induction therapy. I love trying to get them in if they will, like two to three times a week just to track their progress, especially for the first two weeks um, of treatment if, if they let you. So um, the things that is always interesting is um, the pigmentation mode. So we can really see, um, you know, what is happening in the pigmentation mode. But what also tells me more information about the skin healing is actually the vascularity mode. When we're doing things like um, collagen induction therapy, obviously we want to see the inflammation heal and it's an inflammatory process. So we kind of want to make sure that that healing process is going according to plan. If I have a few case studies like this to show my clients, um, it helps them understand why they have to be vigilant with their sun protection and so forth. So I love this mode for that reason. So, um, yeah, so you can see a little bit on fire still, even though looking at me today and I have no makeup on except for mascara as I'm sitting and this was taken just a few minutes ago. You can see how inflamed it actually is underneath the skin, even though talking to you and seeing my picture on the screen here, it, I'm sure you agree it doesn't look quite as on fire as you see here. Um, so don't trust your naked eye <laughs> is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, I like this, this mode, like when you're going to the cross polarized mode, because it shows me like an unspoofed photo, like it doesn't have any enhancements on it. And it really shows me where the hot spots are. So you can see I'm on fire around the perioral area. Um, you know, obviously where the surgery was, um, and this areas that were more aggressively treated. 
UV is now where we really can track and see what improvement it's making. And I'm pretty, um, that's looking pretty good. It's not too horrible. Um, the, the underlying issues, you know, of the pigment sitting deeper, obviously is not enough, um, you know, to really move that. But the pigment in the scar, which you did hammer, really lifted. So you can kind of see, and this is what the bruise looks like under, under UV. Can you guys see? It's, a, it's more of a yellow tone to it. It doesn't have the brown associated with the pigment. Same in here. So you can see I have like a C-shaped bruise. Um, what else did I want to show you? Um, now I have been putting a lot of oil-based products on so you can see this, but it's just because I've really conditioned my extremely dry skin at the moment. And can you see things like this? I will have more of that. You can see it um, on my lid as well. This is what basically a dead or completely cornified cell looks like under UV or wood slamp. If they're like freckly, if you see things like this, it's either fluff in the machine itself or it is like cornified cells because my face was obviously peeling. So if I go back and show you, like I'll show you the wood slide one too. See, so there's a nice improvement. We had it here. And so that responded quite well too. Now I want to show you what it looked like one day after. And this is the fun, because if you can document this for your clients and do a little video recording or screen capture or whatever, this is really where the fun fun is. So I'm going to go back to this one. Okay, so this is today, and we're going to compare it to, yes, yeah, to the 24th. So now we're looking at the day after. See why I wouldn't, like uh, my, like Rachel, I wouldn't typically do this. This is in the name of research. <laughs> Dermal kneeling all day, every day, but this type of treatment, typically not. So one day after on the bottom, five days after. And I want to show you the healing and, and all the light modes. Okay, so that's your uh, uh, parallel polarized mode, showing you the texture. Then we go cross polarized. Yes, a little bit on fire. You can see how around the incision um, or the excision that there's not a lot of inflammation um, on the surface of the skin. And that's because it kind of kept the parameter around it when he did the treatment. Um, <clears throat> so you can see this one, here's the inflammation one. Now note, even just a few days, really nice improvement in the inflammation of the scar itself as well. So I can visually see the healing is happening nice. I mean, the rest of the inflammation is pretty obvious, but I get very excited when I see surgical scarring. This lesion on the side also kind of did really nice if I do uh, this one. Okay, and I'll do the other side for you guys as well. Renee, yeah. you, said, you said this was a laser treatment that, uh, that you did? Yes, don't do what I do. No, do what I say, don't do what I do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It's, it's considered a cold laser. It's a non-ablative laser, mm -hmm. um, but it felt hot. It felt hot. And I'm tracking how fast uh, skin conditioned and cardiotherapy like mine actually heals. So typically this process takes up to two weeks. So I'm feeling very happy with where I'm sitting at the five day mark. So, but it just shows you can do all sorts of research. Now, this is really cool because day two or the day after treatment, can you guys see all this? This is the skin drying and then it has that sloughing effect. So you can really see how much dry skin there was on there and almost none. It's almost completely 
done its turnover um, at this point um, for today. So that's a that's a pretty drastic difference in what I typically track in people's um, skin with this type of treatment. Cool, isn't it? I know, skin nerd thing. I know, it excites me. Might not excite anybody else, but I get all excited. Okay, and then here you can see definitely hardly any lipids because dry like the desert, but you can see the epidermal lipids starting to increase. Can you see like the little, the little hue of the um, that orange um, undertone is really starting to come back, which is kind of where we want that hydration to be. And my skin is never going to be oily because I have intrinsically dry skin, but it's just a nice tracking. Okay. So now you've seen how my skin kind of um, is looking with, with this and what you can do to track people's progress. Now, if, you shut, if you're telling people that you're going to be tracking them, you can really clearly see when they're not following the right protocols. And I love the ability to intervene when things go wrong. If nothing else, I will share with you that when I do training or any treatments like this, like collagen induction therapy, I ask my clients to always send me selfies. So I give them the before set of photos so they can see when I'm talking frontal photo, 40 degrees, 40 degrees. I ask them to send me at least those three, which is what you get with like the three, um, the 320 observe mode. Um, if I want to do the 90 degree and the 90 degree, I'm not going to decline photos of that, but I want them to send me up close and personal selfies, kind of mimicking the observe photos as best as they can on day the day after treatment, day three and day five, and then day 14. So if I can't get them into the clinic to do the clinical photos myself, and I upload it all in their file. So I have photos of every day post my treatment for my own skin as well. Okay, so really nice healing program. And of course, um, I did take some session notes. Um, so uh, if I go view mode, um, sorry, let's just go here. Look how fun this is, because I use the notes session, section, which I really, really, really love. And was it in here? Okay. Now, I picked rough and bumpy skin. I need to go and still customize uh, my observe. I would put sebaceous keratosis, but I did go and indicate this along with the scarring and the observation of the open pore removal so that I know that we've kind of done this. And now you all know <laughs> um, the Botox treatment and I highlighted where we had it. If my clients do have Botox, I typically document that on the treatment and this pricing is not accurate. So don't worry about it. I was just putting playing around. Um, but if your clients do have fillers and they do have Botox, even if you're not the administrator of the injectable treatments, ask them where they have it and document it so that you know where you need to be careful, especially if you're doing things like um, collagen induction therapy, you don't want to do it like within that time, two week time span after they have had their Botox, certainly not in the first um, four days in particular. I give uh, 12 days because that's when we know it's a safe place to go and do treatment after Botox and fillers. Um, and the other thing is you want to know where they have fillers and things like that. If you are a person who do anything like, you know, like buccal massage and stuff like that, we, we need to know this information so that we're not um, creating adverse um, effects on their treatment, on their injectable treatments or any other treatments. So I like my clients to be transparent and share all the things with me. Um, Vene, there was yeah. a question. Can, can I jump in, Vene? Yes, please do. There was a question if we can put on the report uh, two modes to compare each other or before and after. If there is any way to put two pictures, one next to the other on the report. Do you know, um, I'm gonna say I am 99% sure. Let me quickly see, I'm gonna go here. Um, I don't know if you can go back into the report to do it, but... Can I uh, jump in? Please do. Okay, so if you click on the uh, highlight there, let, let, let's uh, make a split screen for a second. Mm -hmm. Just uh, for, the, uh, for the sake of the argument, uh, demonstration. And now you click on highlights. 
and now you can save it to the report. So if Perfect. you have specific split screens that you want to add to the report, this is how you do it. And you can also save it directly to your photo library so you can go and post it on social media later in a higher yes. resolution. Yes, and I'll tell you, I love that ability to save it to the photo library because then I put the, my logo on, like watermark it and all the things. It's super useful uh, for uh, marketing, yes. yeah. Yes, and can you uh, can you tell us again, how do you uh, make it private that you can block out their eyes again? Yeah, it's uh, when you go to the report screen, mm -hmm. then we can anonymize the pictures. There we if, go. if you go to the report, if you click on the um, um, arrow there next to the done uh, button, there is a, yeah. Oh, you don't have it here. Um, you just may need to upgrade or yes. update your, uh, your version of the, make, of the software. I'll make a little screen video to show you guys, but that's also an awesome new feature that you can block, uh, make it anonymous, and then it mm -hmm. blocks out the client's eyes automatically, which I always used to go and do anyway. So wonderful okay so we have about 10 minutes yet so i want to dig into this uh, generational differences so do you guys like the idea of like tracking your clients photos now i chose to show you an example of how i track like one treatment which happens to be a like big artillery treatment and i use i do this for research all the time when i track um you know healing responses and i do measurements of the skin and photographs to kind of track you know, how a healing process occurs and how long it takes and all of that. Not everybody is crazy um, and being micro like that as I am, but um, it's still great that if you're doing a program of treatments, let's use collagen induction therapy as an example. Um, I always take a photo, a documentation photo at the beginning of each treatment. So my before photo is obviously before I do the first treatment. And then I just document, I don't necessarily show and review the images with my clients, but you bet my process includes a photo at the beginning of each service for six treatments or whatever it is. So that I know um, treatment one, treatment two, treatment three, and then I can, you know, um, track how that goes. And also, as humans, we really don't have great memories. We really, really forget very quickly how, much, how far we've come. So it's really great that and you're in the middle of the treatment, you hit that treatment about number four of the collagen induction therapy and your client goes, I don't really see a difference, but my clients are telling me that my skin is looking great. That is when we're really going to bring in the before photo and say, I just want to quickly show you with the progress. And sometimes I don't tell them while they're in the treatment room, but I will do it before and after like we just did and just text that one or email that one split screen, split image for them so that they can really see a picture is worth a thousand words. So then it's like, nope, we really have come a long way. Um, okay. Any questions? You're all good with that? There was a question, how, how can yes. we print the pictures? Print. Yes, go ahead. How uh, as far as I know, there is no um, uh, in-app option to print specific pictures, but once you know you save it to the photo library, then you can print it from there. So, and, and the report, if you want to print the, the report, then this is something that, yeah, you, you can definitely do, but mm. spe printing specific pictures from the uh, app itself, I don't believe this is um, uh, this is an option. Yep, it is. You, um, oh yes, we, you can definitely print the report um, by putting the up arrow, and then you can print it from there. Um, and yes, no, from the yes, you definitely need to um, export it and then and then print it. Um, other than that. But I like that you can print the reports or save it as a PDF. Oh, see there, saved it, um, the one that we just did earlier, Doron. Fun and games. Okay. One. Yes. Um, okay. So general, any other questions? Or do you want me to move on to the generational differences? I think we can move on. Perfect. Okay. So I'll go back. I'm the oldest. And then this is my nine-year-old. So... 
Um, and I will at some point bring you um, the older photos that I have of my boys so that you guys, so that I can bring them up. I'll do a little presentation so that I can show it up because now you can really see the difference that happens over time. And he's only nine at this point in time. But if you compare to my skin, pretty good. He is heading towards that age where you're going to start to notice that slow maturation of the skin. Um, can you guys see this texture differences? So definitely is um, the hair and they has got some lunch on his lips. You're always going to have that with children, chocolate and chips and whatever. Um, you're going to have that uh, at, at around this age is almost 10. So you're going to see the skin starting to move and even the hair from this vallus hair to the terminal hair over time. So this is the point where we start to see that very subtle changes in skin and it often manifests as like little milias and um, little congestions. Um, he does have more of a redhead gene in genealogy than I do. So I'm very vigilant with like the damage his skin can. He's prone to scarring, you know, being a bigger issue than for me, um, you know, um, and so forth. Extremely dry lips. Um, because, you know, he doesn't look after his skin. Typical boy. Um, but this is what I want to show you. The vascularity. He has um, um, both my kids kind of inflamed. And I'd love to you guys to chip in if you have any experience with your kids. But my kids almost spontaneously combust even when they think about running around. So they're always like sweaty, hot. And I can already see the, the, um, the vascularity. I see a little a spider nevi. And of course, it's always hard to get kids in focus as well. So don't be upset um, <laughs> if you don't get them in focus. But I see a little spider nevi here. I see another one here. And definitely the, the beginnings of a hot chin. So we know that there's high risk for skin cancer in a lifetime here. And it's kind of cool to show kids this early on so that they kind of have a deeper understanding whether they can contextualize it or not. But he knows that sun protection is really important for him. His little brother, not so much. Who cares? But he's young enough that I can pin him down and put the sunscreen on him. This one is starting to get a bit too strong for me. So we got to do what we need to do. This is fluff in my machine. I need to defluff it. But we already see the darker hue. But see how it is definitely much um, more even um, than my skin, obviously, because I'm much older than he is. But you can see the, the darkening where you have those vascular issues. But other than that, his forehead is looking pretty good. Um, dry lips. Can you guys see how that flaking of the lips is really showing up in these images? Um, but you just see like when you're comparing it like this, that there is definitely um, a younger skin with way less damage than my skin. You can see he's had a sunburn or two in his... Um, already so you can see well he's had two uh, his face has had two but he said only one significant burn in his life and it was not on my watch I will just say that but you can see that little typical young kid little dent that they have in their nose that um you know showing all the little dry skin but here is great when you see in younger kids this is what oil should like look like can you guys see almost like that corally color that is definitely obvious between his brows. But if I zoom out, you can almost see it as a very fine little layer all over his skin. Can you guys see that? It's like a um, uh, purple, light purple haze or... Yes, like no, more like the orangey. See, like here you can see it. If I point with my cursor here, you can see that oil, you know, because the oil is going to be like anywhere from melon orange to yellow right um and i don't know here you can see the purple you can sure see this overall purple hue but then you can see this there's more of an orange little area orangey corally it's hard to see until you see it so this is why i wanted to use this to show showcase you guys can any of you see what i'm talking about see i can see it renee Awesome. We can see. 
Now, yeah. Renee, we, we know that um, uh, sebaceous secretions increases during pu puberty, obviously. So do you think that he uh, will be prone to maybe acne in the future? Yes, or, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, I think he's going to be prone to acne. But at this point in time, this is because if you really look, he's got that like sitting in the more active T-zone, but you can see it across his cheek as well. This is a really good oil distribution on his skin and it is viscous. So it has enough water in the skin as well to spread the oil all over. This is like how I perfectly would like to see oil more frequently. And what we're going to see if I show you his photo in five years from now, it's going to be all the dots and they're going to be acne and he's going to have more hair and all that kind of stuff. But because the oil will become thicker and tackier and like inability to spread um, as well. So this is kind of how, where we want, to, if you have an older client or a nayer client, when I'm saying we want to increase viscosity of the oil, um, with the presence of more water, it's because we kind of want to bring it back to this smooth distribution, which I typically see easier on a younger skin than an older skin. And it's a very subtle, it just looks like almost like a, um, you know, like a transparency to a photo that's been moved to like 50 or 25%. Just that little coverage of that orange, just nicely placed. Yeah, so I don't know if that helps, but... Um, and very little pigmentation. We, I know he's prone to post-inflammatory pigmentation. So when he does get a breakout of any kind, no picking, we're really trying not to pick and so forth because he's high risk. As you can see here, where he has been scratching something on his nose, he's prone to post-inflammatory pigmentation. Okay, so let's backtrack. And you can see the generational, like the, the tendencies, like in comparison to my skin as well. So here's the little one. He's only five, so they're not all in focus. <laughs> so you're gonna, so he actually had a beautiful pustule on his nose for the longest time that he would not let me touch at all until I got to a point where I got my mom when she visited to pin him down. And <laughs> and addressed it only five I guess is when he was four years old but it's still sitting there a year later very prone to vascular damage and post-inflammatory pigmentation that little bit of a redhead gene thanks to his paternal grandmother um, so you know you can already see those little things he definitely pops up really quick in heat um and you can see that it has created a little bit of a scar, which I will treat with needling when he's older, um, if it's still there. So yes, he's got ridiculous lashes that women pay a lot of money for. So that's kind of fun. Um, and the redness. Okay, so let's go there. So you can see he is not so spotty and blotchy like I am. Yes, you can see the pigment underneath, but it's actually quite smooth and even like my older one. But it's really interesting for me when I see when I am able to capture kids earlier on that you can see how the, the progression of aging, you can just see the maturation of skin and how the elements really do damage our skin over time. We're not going to escape it, but it's still so fun to document. Um, the, the question is always, is what I'm seeing age appropriate and how do we slow down that chronological um, damage and protect ourselves from the environment? So um, yes, they don't stay still enough to kind of have things in focus. I'll just go, yes, I did show you guys this one. I can already see at the tender age of five, a hot chin starting to develop. He is what I call a diffused redness skin type. He's got rosy cheeks. He's got a hot chin. He's going to die with rosy cheeks and how red his nose and chin is by the time he's 80 really depends on how well he protects his skin between now and then. Um, we sit on him and apply a sunscreen because he's even fairer than his brother. His brother is like the darker um, brown eyes and he has blue, blue eyes. So it's really interesting to see that even those little telltale signs of the Fitzpatrick scale, um, you know, and the and the tr the, the the characteristics. Ooh, sorry, and the characteristics that goes with that. Oh, someone is calling me from Ontario. 
um, the characteristics that goes of that is really interesting to see that I can manifest it in the damage that my kid's skin is showing as well. And I realize we're five minutes over time, so I'll just pop into the last one here. And you can see here again, even though it's out of focus, um, you can see that beautiful coral, I call it coral hue, just placed perfectly over the surface of the skin. So, yes. Okay, guys, so I hope that gave you some interesting points of consideration and what you might be able to do to track your clients. <laughs> Definitely invite your, your um, clients' children and to have their photos taken because it gives you great information of what their skin might have been like earlier. Um, yeah, so I love dragging my, my clients' children in to document it as well. And sometimes I just document them right under their parents' name. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Rene, thank you very, very much. It was a pleasure and hopefully this is not the last time we have to talk about it. <laughs> oh, definitely not. I love chatting and you guys feel free to email me if you have any questions. I'm pretty transparent and yes, it is about using this machine to help you build your business. It doesn't do the work for you, but it is a beautiful tool to help you enhance communication, to build the client loyalty, trust, and get them to come back in and track your records and track your work. And for everybody, again, just to echo what Renee just said, every question that you guys may have, don't hesitate, we are here, Renee's here. And we are all one big team that is uh, here to help you and to assist as much as we can. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Renee, thank you very much. And thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Renee. You're welcome.